It's a world where more and more of us are creating media. By some accounts, more than 60% of American teenagers have produced some kind of media, and a growing percentage of those have circulated that media beyond their immediate friends and family. That means we are much more intimately involved in how media, the media, what the media landscape looks like than ever before. The story of King Arthur might begin as a small footnote in one of the chronicles of the kings of England, and by passing through a folk process, gains depth and resonant, new layers are created, people add their own variants of it, and over about a 200 year period, we arrive at Mort d'Arthur, right? One of the great works of the literary world. We've accelerated that process, we've expanded the scope and scale of that process. So an idea may appear on television tomorrow, be rewritten into fan fiction, translated into costumes, built, remixed into video, uh, sampled and turned into sound files, for music, turned into a meme that speaks to the political scene, all adding to awareness, engagement, consciousness. Media creates value and meaning as it travels across the culture. Uh, the companies that seek to lock down and restrict our access to their content devalue it, lose out on the rich and robust conversations that are going on all around it. That our central message is if, if it doesn't spread, it's dead. Many of us live in a world where our awareness of things are shaped by our friends, family members, spreading pieces of media to us and creating that initial contact and awareness of a new property. It's not the agency or the network that is pushing the content at that point. It's the consumer that's engaging other consumers with that content. So in the sense, spreadability is all about the choices we make as individuals, as community members, as parts of larger networks affecting the flow of media through the culture. And every so often, this hits an extraordinary scale and scope. So for example, the nonprofit organization Invisible Children releases Cooney 2012. Expectation it's going to reach half a million viewers over a two month period of time, because that was the track record of previous content. 70 million in four days. Actually, if you took the highest rated film in the US that weekend, the highest grossing show on television that weekend, added them together, you still would get nowhere near the number of views that this human rights video got on YouTube. The scope of that absolutely dwarfs the capacity of broadcast media at the same time. Take a few zeros off, and then suddenly you're looking at those videos that get 70,000 as opposed to 70 million views, and many, many more of those that would never have gotten visibility under the old system. And you realize this is not something on the fringes. This is central to how the media ecology is going to work for the years to come. I increasingly call this a more participatory culture to remind us that not everyone is participating and that many young people and many adults are excluded for one reason or another. Some young people have an enormous productive capacity in using media and making media. Others may have five to ten minutes a day on a shared computer in a library. The second layer is the participation gap, which has to do with access to skills and opportunities, the ability to meaningfully participate. So high schools are blocking access to Facebook, MySpace, access to blogging tools, to Twitter, to YouTube, uh, discouraging the use of Wikipedia, and so forth. And that means that for those people who lack access out of school, their ability to meaningfully participate through the classroom is severely limited. I think the biggest challenge we face right now as we expand who's got the capacity to produce and circulate media is how do we foster greater responsibility on all of us in terms of the media that we distribute? How do people take ownership over the quality of information, the civility of exchange as they move into the online world? So the challenge is how do we build an ethical framework for our collective deployment of participatory culture? How is technology changing your world? Join the conversation at tvo.org slash poll.